In this episode, I'm going to talk about shareholder advocacy and give you some updates from some of the main uh, funds, what they're doing for shareholder advocacy. And shareholder advocacy involves direct dialogue with companies, filing shareholder resolutions, and voting proxies. This is the Impact Financial Planners Podcast with Bill Holiday, brought to you by AIO Financial, a fee-only financial planning firm specializing in socially responsible investing at AIOfinancial.com. Thank you for joining me on this episode. I'm actually going to start with Impact Investment Returns. I get asked this regularly, so I just wanted to briefly address it before we go forward. How do sustainable, responsible impact investments, how do their returns compare to traditional impact investments? And I can point to some returns and just say, hey, over the last year, here's the return for different categories. And I put this on our, on our blog here. Um, and I can look at the five year annualized, like whatever time period you want to look at. And so, I'm looking at the Russell 1000 index versus some of the large U.S. socially responsible indexes or funds, and um, and returns are comparable for five-year, for one-year period. I can look at mid-cap, mid-sized U.S. companies. Again, the returns are comparable. I can look at foreign, developed returns are comparable. I mean, we have what the the MSCI EFI, Europe Asia Far East Index is 25% for 1 year, 8% for annualized for 5 years. Dominies International is 25% 1 year, 10% each of the last 5 years. Emerging Market Index, the the MSCI Emerging Market Index, 37% for the year. 4% over each of the last five years, annualized, five-year return. The Calvert Emerging Market Fund, 44% for one year, 9% over each of the last five years, or annualized five-year return. We can look at bond returns, clean energy returns, um, value returns. And I'm not trying to say that SRI is always going to beat a, a, a standard index. All I'm trying to show here is that it's competitive. In some cases, it outperforms. Some cases, it underperforms. But in general, it's staying competitive with the index. Um, so that's one thing I could point to. Just look at returns. Another thing is studies. And there's over 2,000 studies. And recently, uh, there's a comprehensive review of available research came out and the report finds that impact investors that target market rate returns can achieve them. So you can keep with market rate returns if that's your goal. Um, another thing is just thinking about what makes up the SRI funds. What's the variation between a normal index and uh, an SRI fund? And there's a blog dedicated to talking about those differences. But in general, the SRI fund's not going to have as much in global banks, fossil fuels, and weapons. And it's going to have more in technology. Generally, that's the trade-off. And more in other asset classes to make up the, the same uh, portfolio. So when banks, fossil fuel companies, weapons companies outperform the broader market, then traditional indexes will outperform SRI indexes in general. That's what you'll find. When they underperform and technology, or when technology companies outperform, then you'll see SRI funds outperforming in general. Now, there's more selections. Some funds are made up of only 30 stocks, but this is an additional piece of information, this environmental social governance information about companies. And more information doesn't, doesn't, in general, hurt your ability to select companies. So more information is good. Um, if you're acting on that information, there's studies that have shown that performance can be, market performance can be achieved. So there's studies of studies, there's just looking at the performance, and there's just the logic of where's that difference. Um, 
Okay, let's hit shareholder advocacy. So the RE100, Global Initiative for the Climate Change Group, RE100 is galvanizing corporations with goals, time-bound goals to move their operations to renewable energy. Um, okay, companies with a combined $2.5 trillion have joined this 100-company uh, group. It's actually over 100 companies now. Let's look at Domini, one of, the, one of the big mutual fund companies involved in socially responsible investing. And they talk about some of the resolutions that they filed. They filed with AT&T over indirect political contributions, with Chipotle over sustainable reporting, um, Kraft Heinz over deforestation, uh, about Motorola, about protecting migrant workers in the global supply chain. And then they were co-filers on several, Pepsi, with Pep, towards Pepsi-Cola, on pesticide pollution, Merck on pharmaceutical pricing, UPS on renewable energy goals. I have these all on our blog. I'm just going to touch on some of them. Calvert Funds, a big socially responsible, sustainable impact investing company, filed eight resolutions on climate change and energy. And they discussed them, and they discuss them. Water risks and the impact in agriculture, three resolutions filed. Board oversight of sustainability and board diversity, two resolutions filed. One at Bed Bath and Beyond. One at Discovery Communications. Human rights and indigenous people's rights, three resolutions were filed. Marketing to children, two resolutions to Google and Time Warner. Sustainability reporting, eight resolutions were filed. And minimum wage reform, they filed two resolutions at Pandera, Breads. All right. First Affirmative, and they are a big, um, they are a big organization of financial planners, and they manage assets as well. Um, they filed resolutions on environmental climate change to Kinder Morgan, to Haas, to Emerson Electric, to Costco, Whole Foods, Kroger, Target, human rights resolutions filed to Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, governance resolutions filed to BlackRock, Bank of New York, J.P. Morgan Chase, lobbying and political spending to travelers, ConocoPhillips, and Trillium, Green Century also uh, contributed a lot in shareholder advocacy, and I have links to their reporting pages, their highlights pages. Okay, I will be periodically dropping those by, or just um, updating what companies are doing as far as shareholder advocacy. And if those align with your values, those are potential options for investing. Um, I guess that's all I want to say with that. Check out the blog for more details and for links to the highlighting uh, shareholder advocacy pages. That is it. I hope that's helpful. Please leave me comments. Let me know if this is useful, if you want to see more of this type of reporting, if, it's, if that's a good format. Um, or I can interview... Whatever you want. Let me know what you're interested in. I'd love some feedback. Make comments here. Send an email. Um, that is the end. This is, well, thank you for listening to the values, to, for the Impact Financial Planners podcast. This has been brought to you by AIO Financial, a 
fee-only financial planning firm. If you need help with any part of your finances, please contact AIO Financial for a free meeting, AIOfinancial.com. And if you like these podcasts, leave a brief review and rating on iTunes. Take care. Bye.